music is soothing to the soul. I mean, you get a good soft tune and it relax you. It does me. Water flowed from the mountains and so did a steady stream of farm families. Thousands moved eastward to cotton mills and villages in the late 1800s and early 1900s. The promise of steady pay for public work seemed a better alternative to the uncertainty of farming. Mill work was hard and the days were long. At the turn of the century, a father and his four children made $17 to $21 a week on average. And that wasn't a mill that was doing well. Entertainment in a mill village was simple. You made your own fun. Newcomers to the mill village brought their mountain music with them. Songs often expressed longing for the old farm or disappointment with the new cotton mill routine. The song Factory Girl might well have been about a mill worker who simply wanted her supervisor to take her away from all of this. Yonder stands that spinning room boss, he looks so fair and stout. I hope he'll marry a factory girl before this year rolls out. Pity me all day, pity me I say. Pity me my darling and take me far away. Mike Seeger has dedicated his life to preserving old time music. Music played before it was ever recorded. He loves performing music that people played for themselves just to pass the time of day. I'm a folklorist and a musicologist, but I'm not trained uh, in the academy, you know, in university. Um, I wasn't a very good student that way. Uh, Mike Seeger is one of my great heroes because um, he didn't grow up in this area. Um, you don't have to grow up in an area to be its historian. Uh, he just felt those cotton mill songs, those working people songs. When you go to work, you work like the devil. At the end of the week, you're not on the level. Payday comes, you pay your rent. When you get through, you not going to sit to buy fat back meat. Hit on me. Now and then you get turnip greens. There's no use to call it. We're all that way. Can't get the money to move away. Well, I'm going to starve and everybody will. The Cotton Mill Colic was written in 1926 by David McCarn. McCarn began working in Gastonia cotton mills at the age of 14. The song became an anthem of the mill working class and was performed by several artists in the 1920s and 1930s. When it comes to songs that were recently written about the lives of mill workers, Cy Khan has been prolific as a songwriter and performer. And I spent a good half a dozen years working in and around mill villages all through the Carolinas and other southern states. So those are the people I worked with, those are the stories I heard, and that's the history I've tried to record. Even though Cy Khan grew up in Pennsylvania, he has a lot of empathy for the southern mill worker. Khan came south to work in the civil rights movement in the 1960s. He became an area director of the J.P. Stevens campaign for the Amalgamated Clothing and Textile Workers Union. And he later became an organizer for the Carolina Brown Lung Association. We used to work together Back in those olden times The dust was like November snow That blows so soft and fine I would wind the bobbins and she would skin the quills In my dreams I still see Molly in the mill Brown lung or bisonosis is a lung disease that was contracted by many mill workers before precautions about the danger were taken. Cotton particles in cotton mill air over time have a cumulative effect on the lungs. Many of Sai's songs call attention to the conditions of the workplace from the coal mine to the cotton mill. In my dreams I still see Molly And I hear her call my name She used to keep me spinning Like bobbins on a frame She used to leave me breathless And I'm breathless still In my dreams 
times I still see Molly in the mill. It becomes clear that he's got brown lung. And we don't actually know what happened to her. I assume it's a true story for somebody. What I hope is that different people that hear it will say, yeah, that's what happened to my uh, grandma and my grandpa. It was just like that for them. I, I want people to find a piece of themselves in my songs. I'm not trying to tell them what they should think. People are smart enough to think for themselves. Highways can take us where we want to go. Driving down the interstate or cruising down the information highway, it's possible to explore an infinite number of destinations. You might not even notice the cliffside exit on Highway 74 if you're headed to the mountains that way. You might even drive around this little town in the North Carolina foothills and think it's nothing special. But if you grew up here, or if you visited one of its special addresses, you might have a different idea about this place. The reason it's unique is that you can attribute its development to, to one person. His name is Raleigh Rutherford Haynes, H-A-Y-N-E-S. He was instrumental in the development of mills all up and down the Second Broad River in Rutherford County. He, he was a very influential man. But his love and his dream was Cliffside. Reno Bailey also loves his little cotton mill town. He grew up here and later moved away, but he never forgot the town or its people. When Reno and his wife Betty retired, they worked in the yard for a couple of months. Then they decided they needed a project. We wanted something to occupy us, but it was also something with meaning. So they created Remember Cliffside, a website dedicated to the memory of one of the many company towns in North Carolina. People literally get on there and read for hours and hours and hours. Uh, there's, it's full of uh, newspaper articles, original articles, and uh, stories of years ago. The website features postcards from the early days, photos of the Cliffside Railroad, as well as photos of a model of the town created by cartoonist Jim Scancarelli. It's an incredibly detailed HO scale replica that was inspired by the town of Cliffside. In a section of the website called Odds and Ends, you'll see bits and pieces of Cliffside's past, a funeral home fan, a company pay envelope, and information about how the website actually works in a special section of odds and ends entitled Can You Speak Cliffside? You'll discover the meaning of expressions from yesteryear, expressions like directly and war to frazzle and dope. It's a list of phrases that people use and uh, that might or might not be uh, exclusively cliffsides, but at least it is for the South. In cliffside, we used to call a jukebox a piccolo. And, uh, you know, as in, go put a nickel in the piccolo and play a song. And uh, never heard that from anywhere else. I put in a phrase in there, I, I heard somebody say it, A-law. 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 And so I put it in there and I made up some uh, example sentence for it. If you're interested in books about small town life in the South, you'll want to take a look at Reno's reading list. Most of the website is devoted to the history of Cliffside. Much of the material is old, from the photographs to these advertisements that ran in the town's newspaper. But part of the website focuses on the present. Take a tour and see what the town looks like today. The downtown part is gone. The stores and the main landmark of the town, the, the Memorial Building, that was built in 1917, is gone. It's a very lonesome place hear the wind whistling. In the section of the website entitled One Last Time, Reno chronicles a tour of the mill he took with a small group in January of 2004. The mill, which had primarily been used for storage in recent years, 
was shutting its doors for good after 100 years of operation. If the present is dim for this small company town, its memory still burns bright on computer screens all over the world. Recently, somebody sent me a picture or several family pictures of a man named Will Hames, who was the first photographer in Cliffside. Just discovering who he was and what he did and how long he worked there and seeing some of his work was a real thrill. Stories, photos, the way things used to be, voices of a bygone era. They seem to say, remember our work, remember our lives, remember Cliffside.